we have solved two variable problems, two random variable problems uh, in the previous lecture. Uh, but now we graduate to three variable problems and then uh, to four variable problems uh, in this lecture. Uh, we stick with the same setup, uh, the cable intention that we have been looking at uh, in various ways. Uh, so uh, this is the problem with the third random variable defined. So let's take a minute to read through the problem. Okay, so we have three mutually independent random variables. Uh, y, the yield strength, A, the cross-sectional area, and Q, the load. Uh, they are uh, respectively Y is viable, uh, A is normal, and Q is gumbel. Uh, earlier, in the last one or two examples, we fixed Q at the mean value 1200 kip. Now, Q is a gumbel random variable. Uh, we no longer wish to use the second moment transformation. We lose uh, probabilistic information if the variables are non normal. So, here we would like to employ the full distribution transformation. Uh, so, let's take that up. So, x1, let us call x1 uh, y or y x1, uh, a x2, and q x3. Our limit state therefore uh, becomes x1 x2 minus x3 so it's a simple looking limit state uh, now uh, as required the distribution transformation is uh, u is phi inverse of f of x so that's for each of the uh, x's so i going from 1 to 3 uh, basically uh, you can uh, interpret this as phi of u is f of x so that's a distribution wise uh, equivalence. Uh, now, uh, if we wanted to find out h, express h in terms of u's, uh, and then uh, find the minimum distance to that h equals zero. So this is how we would proceed. Uh, let's do variable by variable. So uh, x1 uh, can be given in terms of uh, u1 in a rather complicated nonlinear fashion which is what you see this is the uh, this is the result of equating the viable the, the two parameter viable with the normal and once you go through the algebra this is what you uh, end up with the viable distribution looks like 1 minus exponential of negative uh, x over u to the power of k so uh, once you um, solve it, this is the form it comes to. Uh, the next one uh, would be a much simpler because area is normal. So x2 in terms of u2 is a simple linear transformation. And then when we come to the gumbel, uh, we uh, also have a rather complicated looking uh, transformation. And that's what you see on the screen the gumbel form uses the double exponential form so if you want to go through the algebra uh, and work through step by step this is what you're going to uh, find so in in the first one and in this third one we see that the normal cdf is implicitly there in the uh, new limit state function uh, obviously this is a complicated limit state function and uh, to find the minimum distance to this from u equals zero uh, is going to be complicated. We could do that, uh, but there's not a single way of solving a problem. So what I want to show you uh, in this one is, uh, in this example, is why don't we stick to the basic variable space? Things look uh, more manageable here, more intuitive. Our limit state function uh, is quite simple looking x1, x2 minus x3 instead of something as complicated when we go to uh, u space. So why, why don't we see uh, what happens if we stick to uh, the x space and try to 
do the same thing. Obviously, we can't optimize, uh, we can't minimize the distance x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square. That would not be right. We still have to do u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square. We have to minimize that, uh, but we can operate from x space. So that is our uh, our hope, our, uh, and let's see how, how far we can go with that. Uh, so uh, this is um, our uh, problem statement. We have g of x uh, equals x1, x2 minus x3. And now we want to minimize the function of x1, x2, x3, which is our distance in the standard independent standard normal space uh, u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square obviously uh, there is a relation between the x's and the u's uh, the constraint is also put in the basic variable space so we have a nice looking constraint an equality constraint x1 x2 minus x3 is equal to zero and here are the function relations between uh, the u's and the x's. So as I was saying that this is the viable to normal transformation. This is the normal to normal transformation for u2 and for u3 this is the gumbel to normal transformation. Uh, so this is our problem setup and uh, but we would need uh, if we could provide it would be helpful we would need the, the gradients uh, of the objective if we go for a gradient based algorithm uh, we would also need uh, the gradient of the constraint if we can then that will be great uh, the, the problem becomes more efficient uh, to solve so uh, let's look at it how, how to work this so uh, the objective function r which is the distance to the uh, the distance to h in the u space so that u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square uh, the first derivative of that the first partial the gradient of that in respect to the x's would be we can use the chain rule of differentiation so uh, twice u and then del u del x so del u del x for that we will use the distribution to distribution equivalence so uh, that term that you see the density of x divided by the density of u that basically is the product of equating the the two cdfs so phi of u is cdf of x so we differentiate uh, the left hand side with respect to x so phi of u with respect to u first then partial u partial x and on the right hand side it is the partial of the CDF with respect to X so that gives me the density of X so that's how this twice U PDF of X divided by the PDF of U that form comes in the uh, final uh, solution uh, and the gradient of the constraint in this particular case it's very simple uh, the first one is x2 the second one is x1 and the third one is minus 1 you just uh, differentiate uh, g and that's what you get uh, now uh, our solution would be if we can find the minimum uh, of r our beta would be uh, the square root of that minimum so root of r star uh, and uh, the design point automatically since we are operating in x space would be x1 star x2 star x3 star if you want to find u1 star we have to use the uh, map that you see on the left so u1 is phi inverse of one minus exponential so on so that expression has to be used uh, if we want to find the u1 star the u2 star and the u3 star one by one uh, here is the answer uh, first and then i will uh, walk you through the steps that I have used uh, in obtaining these answers uh, and that is basically employing a MATLAB program uh, and uh, it's a good way to understand uh, how to set up such problems in a standard 
platform such as MATLAB. So uh, the answer we get, the design point is uh, Y star is about 28 KSI, uh, the A star is about 56 square inch and the design value of the load is about 1565 kilopounds. The corresponding minimum distance points in U space are as you see uh, minus so 1.62 standard deviations below the mean for the first one about 60 percent standard deviation below the mean for the second one and about one and a half standard deviations above the mean for the third one and uh, that gives me a beta of about 2.26 now how accurate is this 2.26 uh, beta of 2.26 uh, we have mentioned that uh, form is approximate so to compare uh, we later have solved this problem uh, using monte carlo simulations uh, with a good number of trials uh, and we get the value of a pf of about uh, 0.0158 uh, which gives an equivalent beta of about 2.15. So uh, it seems that FORM is overestimating reliability or underestimating the PF. And this is something we will remember uh, when we uh, take up uh, a discussion of SORM later in this lecture.